Hello everyone, KJ4YZI, you are watching Ham Radio Concepts, and today we're looking at some new antennas that are new to me, but a very, very serious quantum theory patented design that answers a lot of the questions that everybody asked. Eric, how do I get good VHF UHF performance on my little car without having to have something ridiculous on your vehicle, like what you have with all these big old antennas, but they want something that works well for several different frequencies, VHF, UHF specifically, that is compact. It doesn't really have a lot of wind load. How do I get good performance on my vehicle and make it look like this? We're gonna look at this new compact antenna. The compact antenna is probably going to be the first antenna on my vehicle my diesel rather here that of course i said i wouldn't put antennas on my vehicle ever no way this truck will never see antennas okay yes maybe i did say that but in terms of antennas i'm not going to be putting these you know gigantic extravagant antennas on my diesel and this is one of them that i will have because it doesn't look so bad but it's going to have better performance when you think an antenna compromise small you want something small it's usually not going to be as good right well we're gonna find out what this one's like for the size that it is. And I actually have two of them. So in this video, I'm probably gonna show you the one, and then I'm gonna make another video and show you this one. Compact antenna made in the USA. And here's the, I'm gonna show you what I'm reading right now on the video. So as you can see, it can be mounted vehicle or base station. So mobile or base antenna. Optimized, compact, high performance ham radio antenna for two meter and 440 bands only 7.5 inches long. Now, Compact Tenna was gracious enough to send a couple of these for the recent Treasure Coast Ham Fest in February. We gave these away as door prizes. I've heard from one of the two about the antennas and they have so far have loved it. So I'm waiting to hear about the second person that got that and what they think about it. Uh, we had a lot of door prizes that, that week or that day. So thank you Compact Tenna again for sending those as prizes. So the product narrative, if somebody said, what is this antenna? Well, it is a small, rugged antenna with high performance, superior science performance with vehicle location changes and movement. Meaning, you're not tuning this antenna at all. There's no way to tune it, it's pre-tuned. It's tuned by each individual vehicle, the mount that you have it on, which I picked up a couple of these uh, diamond, I'm not sure if they're totally 100% authentic diamond mounts, but they seem to have a pretty good coax and solid uh, construction here. But I just picked up two cheap mounts like this. Uh, these are NMO magnet mounts, and that's all you would really need on this uh, application. But moving the magnet mount around and the antenna around, uh, specifically designed to be used in the corner of the body of the vehicle. So on the corner of the roof or on the corner of the vehicle, uh, whether it be your hood or your trunk, it depends on the vehicle and how you're going to put it on. But I've already been playing with it and I've seen that moving it from the corner to the middle will change the SWR by two numbers. When it's 1.3 to 1 on the corner, it's 3.1 on the center of the roof. So it's designed specifically per the manufacturer to be on the corner of the, the vehicle uh, for that. So let's get back into this here. Superior science, performance in non-line of sight obstructed environments such as behind buildings and garages, behind other vehicles and in valleys. So that would be a great thing for people that are always uh, trying to hit a distant repeater or maybe not too, too distant, but a repeater that's always got something in the way. Maybe you live in a city and there's buildings everywhere. So this would be a, a substantial increase in the small form factor that it is to be, have a you know, usable antenna on your mobile or at your base. Maximum power rating is 85 watts for the 2 meter band and 50 watts for the 440 band. So that covers pretty much every dual band 50 watt radio out there. Uh, there is a duty cycle on here for the maximum uh, transmit time, total one minute and every two minute, any two minute period. So if you're laying on that mic for a long time, maybe if you're moving and the air is going through, it might not be so bad, but because of the smaller design and the compactness, um, you have a duty cycle. Sometimes I can't get anybody that wants to talk more than five seconds anyway. So unless you're a big Jim who times out the D-Star repeater every week, <laughs> Don't do that, Jim, with this antenna, okay? Uh, so the antenna type is a unique electric magnetic field diversity science and technology patented design with a US patent number right there. 
with a special design constructed of spiraled and cylindrical metal sheeting, including extended flat monofiller spiral Tesla-like coils. All resistance, inductance, and capacitance matching is efficiently done by the metallic physical geometric form of the antenna itself as opposed to internal or external lossy components of other designs. So there's no tuner involved, there's no uh, you know loading coil that you have to adjust and match. It's all designed on the antenna itself. So each one of these antennas come with a little Ziploc and it's got some dielectric grease here and a little gasket so that way you have, uh, it's good to use that because there are uh, situations on my antennas where the uh, dissimilar metals or the threading on a, a you know certain style ferrule on an antenna gets rusted and it doesn't you know you don't want to have a bad connection. This thing is very light. Does it tell me how light this is? Does it tell me the weight of this? I, I'm I'm only guessing this thing is maybe six ounces, eight ounces. I mean this this is not not heavy at all. Inside here is the um, metal leaf spring type connection. Okay, and basically. Uh, threads in here so you shouldn't have to do anything to tune this again there's no tuning required on this antenna you do not have to put an analyzer on here and adjust it up and down for lowest res uh, resonance the the idea about this is you're going to get the lowest SWR and the best installation with the best spot for your mag mount on the vehicle so it doesn't mean you have to take anything apart and say well my SWR is a little high then maybe try moving it a little bit but do what the instructions say and get it in the corner of your vehicle the corner of the roof one of the corners of the roof and it will not per, you know damage the performance of the radiation pattern you're not making it directional that way it's just coupling with the vehicle in like I said Jack's very uh, technical way of explaining how it works and uh, maybe he could explain down the road for us in a more technical term instead of me but um, so all you really need to know is that you want to put some, you know, little gasket that comes with it. All right, that's going to go on the base, the dielectric grease. So you got the gasket around there, stretched around. I'm just going to put a little bit of this dielectric grease right there, okay? And I'll put just a tad bit on this side and this side, and that is going to spread around when I screw the antenna on, like so. Make sure you don't cross thread this. All right. So, not too bad looking, right? Okay, and although I am going to be testing this in my vehicle, my work vehicle, just for the simple fact I'm going to take a trip for a couple days up in North Florida. So I'm going to use this and put it to the test while I'm mobile. But the other, I'm probably going to have one of these on my work vehicle. And this is what's going to be on, um, actually I might put the, the, well, I'm probably going to have to get another one. Again, Compact Tenna had sent me these. They sent two for the uh, prizes for the giveaways at the Ham Fest. And then they sent me these two uh, for my evaluation. They said, hey, you know, check these out. Uh, don't just hand them out and, and tell people, you know, hey, these are your prizes. Let's see what you think about them. So uh, thank you, Compact Tenna, again. Now, there's a lot of mounting options for this as well uh, as far as different types of mag mounts. The big, you, know, you won't need nothing more than a four inch. But I don't think hard mounting it is going to be uh, that well because you're prob well, let me show you something here. This is a hard mount NMO right here. I just forgot about this. Now that's, that's for my CB antenna, all right? And I bent it up a little bit. So I have my uh, FM radio antenna over there and my, and my CB antenna right here. And the reason is, is because somebody had this vehicle before me for work and they said, I don't want this antenna to look so obtrusive, um, you know, for, I want it to look like, a, in my neighborhood, like a uh, radio antenna, like that over there. So they had another little one here with a whip or whatever, and I, I repurposed that for my CB radio. And I bent it up a little bit, and that's a 1.1 to 1 S2 error. But look how big that is, see? You may say, I don't want something like that in my vehicle. Well, all right, so here's my most non-official test right here that I'm gonna show you first on how different the SWR can be from moving it from there to there to there and then to the roof or the, the hood, okay? And this would be mostly the back corner. Now, they say less than 2.1 SWR uh, expected nominal. So because my van is a little bit longer than probably what I should have bought for a mag mount, um, I could have used a little extra cox, but I want to show you something. Now, the 7100 ICOM has a SWR function on it 
that'll scan, uh, you know, 500 kilohertz or one megahertz or whatever it is. So here's what I'm gonna do. I got this plugged in, okay? And I'm gonna go like this to my 7100. All right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna set SWR. And, and if you're not familiar with that function for uh, SWR on the 7100 and 7300, 9700, stuff like that, you basically tap play and then no oh, play and then you start clicking the button and every time you click it it's going to take a reading watch okay so that would be less than two well 1.7 to one across now watch this just moving this like this watch okay watch again Here we go. Came down a little bit more, a little bit closer to 1.5. Now watch this. Take this, and I'm gonna put it just here on the corner, right there. All right. Now watch the difference. Look at it. Completely flat SWR. Okay, there's nothing there. Oh, I'll do it again. Okay, watch the little arrow. It is completely flat SWR. Now, just simply moving it like this. Watch. It's not the corner anymore, right? Here we go. Now look what it did. It brought the SWR. It's still completely usable. 1.3, 1 1.4 to 1. But the idea is first that the manufacturer's claim is valid. On the corner of the vehicle looks to be the most efficient for SWR. Now, with that being said, I don't think I want mine right here because this hood is pretty steep. Maybe you got a flat hood that looks better. That looks a little steep there, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to put it um, over that door over there on that corner, which is not, you know, not really the corner of the, of the uh, vehicle, but rather the corner of the roof. And my kill axle will reach, reach there and let's see what happens. Let's see if I go, let's try that. Let's see what happens here. Okay, I could live with that. About 1.2-ish SWR there. And, uh, you know, again, this is going to change per vehicle, per mount, per installation, because every vehicle is completely different. Unless you got a transit, you're going to get the same exact results as I do. Uh, but I'm going to leave it like that for now. Uh, 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 quieting into the machine. 95% quieting, okay, about maybe five miles away with this new antenna. I'm going to go down to 0%, which what I would imagine is not even a quarter of a watt, and see if I make it in. Here we go. Okay, standing by. That is 0% on my meter, KJ4YZI. Uh, no difference. No difference. Of course, you're through the repeater, you know, so uh, do you want to try it direct? I'll, uh, I'll take a look and see what it looks like on the meter. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm not looking for a signal report through the meter. I'm just, com I'm, I'm just amazed that at zero percent, I'm still putting out something. It's got to be what, uh, maybe the drivers on the radio. I get that's it. And this little antenna, about what five or six miles from the repeater, is uh, only seven inches tall, and it seems to be doing quite well. Yeah, uh, it sure is, man. You sound, uh, sound like you're sitting next door to me. I really couldn't tell the difference through the various power level changes so honestly all right let's let's try direct real quick on i don't know six one four six five two oh or something and we'll see uh, i'll go up to full power see what happens yeah give me a second to turn my other radio to that frequency stand by all right if you don't hear me then i will come back here kj4 yzi i'm going to qsy to one four six five two oh That's a hundred percent. Okay, KJ4YCI. 
from W2JKD on 146.520. I'm running 51. So this is for you. KJ4YZI also using 50 watts. Vero Beach. Yep, yep, I'm hearing you real good, man. I, uh, you're not enough to, uh, you're not enough to kick my meter over, but, uh, yeah, you're 50% quiet. Okay, uh, how long, how far do you think we are from Vero Lake Estates, I guess by the, by the exit to, uh, your area? Okay, so, uh, Vero Lake Estates, is that, uh, when you're talking about the Feldsbeer Sebastian exit on 95, is that where that is? Yeah, I'm right right over there. Okay, well, we know it's seven miles. It's seven miles from that exit to uh, State Road 60. And then I am three miles south of that um, as the crow flies. So, yeah, I mean, let's say ten, ten miles, and we're going to be close on that. I could, I could Google Earth it, but they basically say ten miles. I gotta say that's that's not too bad for a little um, seven-inch antenna on the top on a magnet mount, trying it out at 50 watts on simplex. You don't have a beam or anything, right? You're just using a vertical. Yeah, this is just the vertical. Um, why don't you uh, pop the power down a little bit? And I'll see how I can do if uh, drop it down to the uh, other power level. All right, let me go to hat. Let me go to 50 percent. That is 50% KJ4YZI. Yep, you got, no, uh, you got noise here, um, uh, to be expected. Uh, uh, you know, you probably, uh, I mean, but very intelligible, still 30% quieting, I would say. All right, I'm going to drop down 25%. That is 25%. That is 10% power. No, man, I lost you at that. I mean, I, I can hear the carrier. I hear the carrier come on, but I, nothing understandable. Now, how about me? Can you copy me okay? I'm only hearing you. I, you're not kicking the meter at all, but I can hear you just with some frying bacon there. That's 20%. Okay, uh, yeah, you said that was a 20%. Yeah, come on back up in power a little bit. I'll be able to hear you better. So, like you said, I'm not moving the meter, but you're, uh, you're copying me. Okay. Yeah, there's 50%. Now, I'm going to go back down to 25%. I'm going to change back over to this uh, 5 8 wave whip. Better part of 48 inches long and see the differences, right? Yeah, that's a good place because right now, I mean, I can exactly measure where you are. So, yeah, go switch antennas. We'll see how the difference is. All right, that is uh, 50% with the Demono band 48-inch uh, 5 8 wave antenna. Yep, there's an improvement to, over the other antenna. Um, uh, not significant. Yeah, uh, significant. Yeah, it's, um, uh, whereas the other antenna you were uh, bordering on a little bit noisy, uh, this one is, uh, I don't want to say full quieting, but 80% uh, quieting. What do you think, Dennis? So he could copy me on the on the little antenna, but not on this one. Is that right, Dennis? You can't copy him now. Is that right? Weird. That's what he said. Wow, it must be the something to do with the um, the, the this this is a five eighths wave versus the other one. I mean, the other I, I got. You you came up. I can hear you. I'm gonna drop down to ten percent and see if you can if you can hear me because before ten percent I wasn't intelligible, right? That's right. You were not. That's correct. And now you're in S three, and you, um, um, I had nothing on you before. I'm gonna drop down to ten percent. Stand by. Okay. The difference is now you're actually lighting up two LEDs on my uh, on my power meter, and you weren't lighting up any before. All right. This is ten percent power. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely more copyable for me. How about you? Uh, yeah, I, I can hear you with full, uh, 
uh, full comprehension. Uh, again, it's noisy, but uh, I'm not losing any uh, any words where I was having difficulty hearing you before. And that's with, uh, Isn't that interesting? Not a great answer, so, so uh, certainly not to that antenna there. Anyway. Right, right let me turn, turn this down. Good to you, 72JKD. Let me turn it down. He's talking to Dennis there. That's interesting. You know, check this out. So, um, for simplex communications, let's back up here and look. That little thing I was getting, I want to say it's 11 miles exit to exit, then three miles from the exit to his house. So, that's, let's call it over 10 miles, uh, 12 miles with that little tiny antenna. And what's interesting is Dennis, which I couldn't hear on either one of them, heard me on this one, but he did not hear me on the Shark 5 8 wave antenna. So he heard me on this one, but he didn't hear me on the other one. So that's interesting. Uh, moral of the story is I think though with the size, for me to be able to hit all the local repeaters, I was at 0% into that repeater, 146640 almost full quieting, 0% power, which had to have been a couple milliwatts, no problem. So, and that's about four or five miles, I think, from here. So, long story short, I'm gonna do some more testing when I take this thing on the road trip, and we're gonna see. And then also, the next comparison I'm going to do is going to be with this one, but check it out. I'm gonna use this on VHF, UHF, being as nine inch, and see if it works just as well. In fact, I got another mount here. I wonder, will that antenna, the Scan 3, uh, be better than the Scan or than the, the dual band? So maybe you think, well, now I'm adding something that has GMRS and um, also VHF UHF, and it's only two inches longer, so big deal, right? So we're gonna try that out. We're gonna see what the Scan 3 does in comparison because now I know where I sit here and how I've moved that thing around and how it moves the SWR around, what the Scan 3 will do. Let me show you the website here real quick because it's very important. A lot of, you know, with a lot of subscribers, man, people ask me a lot of questions and the, the person to ask for anything more detailed than what I can explain would be uh, contact at Compact 10. The website is in the description, but I want you to, sh to see something here. This is not a dual band antenna made by somebody for Eric and his video on Ham Radio Concepts. I'm happy to check that out and have these on my antennas, uh, on my vehicles, but more than just a ham radio, they're in the government. Uh, of course, GMRS, which is the next video you're going to see um, on my uh, new GMRS radio with one of these antennas uh, and all kinds of stuff. But it's small. You know, no tuning of the antenna structure is a big key factor here, which means you don't adjust anything on the antenna, just where you place it on each individual vehicle installation because every vehicle is different. Allowing passages into garages, drive-throughs, below overhangs and branches. I already mentioned drive-throughs because I smack every single one of them every time. So there are some reviews down here. And you can read these reviews by other hams on which model they used. And now I'm seeing right here 10 meter, 2 meter, for, wow, 6 meter, 2 meter, 440. I got to check these out now one day. Um, Ham R7 and stuff like that. Micro beam. All right, so you can see examples. People had, you know, put this person looks like they hard mounted it, and they put it again in the corner of the vehicle. Uh, it gives you their, you know, testimonial here. But my idea is this: um, I the reason I'm showing you this, and maybe the the compact tenant will put me as a hey, Eric reviewed my stuff. You know, I did talk to him and stuff. But uh, you're looking at the different ideas here gives you ideas on what people can do. Look. You guys are asking me these questions. I live in an apartment. I can't have an antenna. What do I do to hit a local repeater? There's some options right here. Look, I just saw this closet antenna on a ground plane in the closet of their house or apartment. Ingenious. An attic antenna. You guys have asked this. I'm telling you. You've asked me over and over again. And I always say, yeah, throw a whip in there. Throw a mag mount. Throw this. Check it out. Uh, they have a lot of inform, you know, information here, uh, more about uh, Dr. Jack there and uh, other antennas that they have. They even have CB radio antennas and more. So uh, a lot of different uh, designs that they use uh, for different applications. And um, let me tell you, if, if I get Jack on the videos one day, uh, they will he will explain the theory about a lot of this. Here's another example and another example. Now, it looks like this person mounted right in the middle, but they got that... Uh, uh, working good. So these are available at Ham Radio Outlet. They're available at DX Engineering. And man, there's a, oh, here was a Dr. Jack here. So he must have been, oh, I've been in that booth there before, or at least talked to uh, 
uh, Tom uh, at this booth, but I never really got on anything famous here. But I'd love to uh, talk to Jack and see uh, personally what he uh, is working on or what he could really do. I mean, there's a lot of information on here. Look, another vehicle. So on a Corvette, I mean, on a brand new Corvette, man, you got to be a diehard ham radio to put an antenna on there. And you may say, well, that looks stupid on a Corvette. But you know what? That person has an antenna on a Corvette, and you probably don't. So <laughs> that's why I'm interested in seeing these things right here. So as I said, um, this can be explained in the most uh, technical theories possible from RF engineering from Jack himself who made these. Uh, thank you, Jack, for sending them again. But my thing is real life, and I went through this before on a recent video with receiver sensitivity numbers, and although it is the top on the Sherwood report, I want to know what it means to me in real life. That test I just did was real life compared to, well, is this thing in an atmosphere or an environment with an analyzer? I want to see what it does for me in this situation, and the fact that I can't talk to him, um, you know, on a, on a handheld, even with a large handheld antenna, to Vero, but I could do it with that little thing. You know, uh, if I'm on the open road, not with these trees, maybe it does even better. We're gonna find out. I'm gonna see what that thing does as I drive all over Florida and uh, how it works with different repeaters because I know where my vehicle usually runs out of range and then I'll be able to recap when I do this antenna here, this uh, Scan 3. So thanks everybody for watching, 7.3. If you're interested in ham radio, you've seen it on my shirt, you've seen it in videos before, hamradioprep.com. Use the code ERIC20 you get 20% off and it's an online course and it really helps you um, learn uh, on there, you know, with interactive, uh, you know, videos on, on helping you study for the answers and helping you get it so you get your license. And uh, hamradioprep.com is a great sponsor. Thank them and use Eric20 and you will save 20% on every course you buy. Thanks for watching. 7.3, this is KJ4YZI.